And we're back talking the Batman. Mm-hmm. Once again, we are here with our spoiler episode. Yes, you heard me right. Spoiler yeah. review. We are going to spoil this thing. Um, we've done a spoiler free review. If you haven't seen the movie, go check that out. Go see mm-hmm. the movie. Come back and watch this. Yes. Um, so, F and I am excited because you and I haven't really had a chance to really dive into this movie together because life has taken us in different directions the last couple weeks. We saw it opening night or early. Yeah. And, uh, but now we get to really dive into all things mm-hmm. the Batman. Yep. And again, so you can't get mad at us. Spoiler review. The movie has been out officially two weekends now. You've had two weekends to yep. watch this thing. We're spoiling the crap out of it. That's what's happening today. And, uh, and we're both doing this review with now with multiple viewings behind us. And so now we really get to dig into it. And we'll even see if there's been changes from our non-spoiler review to this one in some rankings or thoughts. All right. So, and of course, Gary's a Batman guy, so he's got to kick this off for us. Yeah. So, okay. Um, initial thought after seeing this movie the first time, uh, I liked it. I thought Pattinson did a good job. Did a great job. Thought it was very well directed, very well. And I was like, oh, it's a solid, solid movie. Mm-hmm. And the more I thought about it, I went from liking it to, oh, I really like that movie. And then I went to my second viewing. Mm-hmm. And I went from liked it to really liked it to, I love that movie. That movie <laughs> is great. Mm-hmm. My second viewing was just, I, I noticed more things. Mm-hmm. Um, I appreciated more things. Uh, my seats were better. Um, and if you saw our spoiler free review, uh, my, our, I picked the wrong seats and we were way up front on the IMAX. Um, so up front, I've told Efren this, he saw me right, he was next to me. I had to lift my hat up on top of my head to see <laughs> the screen was here. Uh, yeah. But second viewing, last row, middle seat, sound encompassed me. Is that mm-hmm. a word encompassed? And yes, you're good. I uh, love the Batman and the more I think about it, I love it even more, and I cannot wait to throw it on the shelf. Can't wait to see it again with the wife because she hasn't seen it yet. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, and I just, I think this movie is just gonna age really well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. This thing, same with me. Multiple viewings. I liked it more the more I saw it. Um, it, it. The, the I know we talked about. We felt the length on the other on the spoiler free review. Did not feel the length. You know, the second, third time, which is weird because normally after you've seen a movie and you go back, you actually feel it, feel like it's longer um, because you know what's going to happen. But there was so much more to take in. I think that's the best part is there's just so many different like layers to this movie. So many things going on that you still had plenty to pay attention to. And so therefore it didn't feel as long as before. Some of that probably could have been the seats like Gary Ray talked about um, to where we were just kind of uh, getting sore. But and again, to Gary's defense, people on the app. The seats looked way further back than they actually were. So, in his I don't defense, like often. I don't. Yeah. You know. So, but, but yeah, but yeah, it's um, I mean, it just got so much better. Um, I think, and I think Gary, I, saw, I think I texted you this too, but there is also for me, I, I still had a hard time with Catwoman's character. Um, you know, not not necessarily the actress. You know, I mean, she's fine, I guess. Like, um, but like, the character just to me just didn't do a whole lot. Still, uh, even in multiple viewings, I still felt like we cut out the character completely or even shortened it. Um, I think I mentioned this to you the other day when I was like, man, if they just did like the whole, like she goes in with like the camera thing, the camera eye uh, contact thing. And then like they have that whole ordeal and then she gets mad and she disappears. And then maybe she doesn't appear towards until the end where she's like, hey, I found this scumbag cop. And what are you going to do about it? And then he's like, oh, my gosh, and kind of throws Batman off a little bit. And then you kind of pick up from there. I think that would have been a whole lot better because I just felt a whole lot of stuff. It was too forced and it was just too much. But other than that, like I appreciated more the ending, you know, with the seawater and or whatever, you know, all that stuff blowing up. I appreciated that more. And um, and I'm with you, Gary, because Gary had told me this off screen. I am with you. The whole Joker thing could have left it out or left it an after credit. But outside of those things, I mean, outside of some like the Catwoman and that, I'd liked it a whole lot more. And I guess we'll just see where this conversation takes us because there's a lot to talk about. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. but I but I did. I appreciated uh, Robert Pattinson's version of Batman. Um, Andy Serkis as as um, Alfred. I, I probably could have used more of that, less of Catwoman, more Alfred. I needed more Alfred in this. Um, and then the Riddler was even better with each viewing. 
I really appreciated the Riddler a whole lot more and understood why he was doing what he's doing a whole lot more too. Yeah, indeed. I uh, So speaking of Catwoman, uh, you brought her up. I yep. think everything after the nightclub scene where she wore the contacts, which I, I told you this after the movie, I thought the the recording contacts were was one of the coolest Batman gadgets I've mm -hmm. seen. I thought that was a great idea. Everything after that with her felt very forced. Mm -hmm. um, and it was like they forced the relationship with her and Batman. Um, yeah. You know, and I think just trim that a little bit you know uh uh yeah so and then yeah the joker um stuff didn't need that mm -hmm. uh that was uh it just way too much um could have been mid credit in credit scene but really the you know the more i thought about it after second viewing those are really the only two things about this movie i didn't like um i thought it was casted very well colin farrell disappeared mm -hmm. penguin. if you didn't know he was in this movie he was the penguin uh, yeah you know uh oz as he's called it um and this was directed well like i said and paddington was terrific mm -hmm. that opening narration is one of my favorite batman things of any movie we've seen where he's right. narrating where he's and he's he's journaling the knights trying to keep things in and and, mm -hmm. the whole, and the bad guys not wanting to go into the shadows because he may be out there and mm -hmm. my second viewing, I told this, told you this off, off air, I guess what we would call it. Uh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a scene where the, the guy robs the store. He looks up and there's a police helicopter. That mm -hmm. doesn't bother him. But when it moves over and he sees the bat signal, that strikes fear into him. Mm -hmm. And it was a great introduction to this Batman. And then the whole thing towards the end where he's real, realizing, I need to change. I need to offer hope, not just vengeance, not just fear. I need to be something be different. I need to be something more, more city yep. that message was great and uh paul dano as the riddler um just menacing uh psychological stuff he nailed it um and if you haven't seen paul dano in movies uh check out the movie prisoners and there will be blood because he is a phenomenal actor and um mm -hmm. he was great in this yeah <laughs> yeah so like i mean see all that stuff and that's the thing that kills me is like they did a good job showing like how Batman is still like a myth almost, mm -hmm. right? Like when you're also talking about like the bat signal scared him and they're kind of looking around because they don't really know how he operates. They don't know like if he's going to be there or not. He's still kind of this myth, this legend. And um, and still like even learning. Uh, one thing that I appreciated too is that like the cops always, like there were always cops that kind of had beef with Batman. But right now only Jim Gordon was his friend. Yeah. That was the only cop as his friend. Everybody else had beef. They didn't want him around. Um, and just showing that he has not gained the respect of the city, of the police force, mayor, like nothing. He's, he's gotten zero respect except for Jim Gordon. And so, and I thought that was great because we haven't seen that version of Batman before. And um, which leads me to, I think those who may not appreciate this movie as much, I don't think they understand, even though it was told to you like 20 times throughout the movie. This is year two of Bruce Wayne being Batman. This, it, again, this is only his second year doing it. Yes, some stuff's happening. He's doing the best he can. He's still learning everything, which I appreciated because we haven't had a Batman yet on screen, on the silver screen, that we've actually been able to like grow with him and see him struggle, see him learn how to be Batman. Because we've seen like like with Batman Begins, yeah, he's gone through the montage, but he already kind of had within him the whole, you know, hey, well, I'm going to, like had the morals and he's like, here's how we're going to operate. And I, I kind of know how Bruce Wayne and Batman are going to coexist. And so this Batman, he doesn't have it figured out. You know, he has his moral. He has his no guns thing. That's all he has. And and based on this movie, it seems like the only reason why he has that rule is because his parents were killed by a gun. Yeah. No other reason than that. And, you know, and, and so being able to see him, like I'm not using guns because it, what it did to my parents, but then, it, but other than that, he's still beating the crap out of everybody. looks like he's enjoying it. And, you know, like the whole vengeance thing. I mean, this is, he is severely traumatized. We haven't seen that. And I think that's what adds so much to this movie is that, yes, he's having to deal with this, you know, this psychopath and the Riddler, right? Like he's having to deal with this and he's having a hard time. He can only trust Jim Gordon and Alfred. And, and, and even like, so there's just so much that's going on with him. And so if you have a problem with him, like where there wasn't enough Bruce Wayne, 
Well, for one, a lot of comic book fans, we were very glad we got to see a lot more Batman. He's not taking his mask off every three seconds like every other superhero movie, which drives us nuts. Keep your dang mask on. It drives me nuts. Every one of the moms going to figure it out that who you are. Anyways, I digress. But like he gets to be Batman. And then it's like, well, there's not enough Bruce Wayne. Well, because he doesn't want to be Bruce Wayne. He just wants to be Batman. And so he has to work through that. And then towards the end of the movie, like you said, I got to be something more. And it kind of clicks for him like, okay, I'm going to have to approach this differently. So now the idea of a sequel or a trilogy is exciting because the character has somewhere to go, which I think is really good. Has somewhere to go not only as Batman, but as Bruce Wayne. Mm -hmm. And if you saw this movie and you – and I've talked to a couple people who – didn't enjoy it for those reasons. It is very important to watch it understanding this is year two Batman. He doesn't have it figured out. That's why the Batmobile, that's why he stalls in the Batmobile. Yeah, that's doesn't know how to drive it yet. Yeah, he doesn't know how to drive it. He's on a motorcycle. You know? yeah. Like, yeah. Then, he literally just built the thing and was like, all right, let's go test drive it. And then, yeah. yeah, he's not, he's still figuring out. And it's, it's yeah. cool because it, however movies they make in this universe or whatever, you get to. You get, we all get to take a step with him. And, you know, that's mm-hmm. why he hesitated when he was at the top of the building. And he crashed landing when he was doing the, I don't know what you call it. The gliding it. thing. Yeah, gliding, whatever. Yeah, falling with style. Base jumping. Yeah, falling yeah. with style. Whatever it yeah. is. I don't know. Um, but uh, in that, in, when I saw that this was the story Matt Reeves is going to be telling, that it's going to be a year two Batman, or early Batman, I, my thought was, okay, I, if that's the case, I hope they stay there and really hit that home. Mm-hmm. It's not, well, he can do this now, but then all in this scene, he's he knows everything. No, it was yeah. Uh, yeah. evident that this is a guy trying to figure it out. And I think that is, is better storytelling. It is, makes you more excited for mm-hmm. movies. And he doesn't, like, he is Batman. He doesn't know how to be this Bruce Wayne anymore. Mm-hmm. He hasn't figured it out yet. So yeah. everyone that's like emo Batman, he's still the, you know, blah, it was like, he doesn't, he doesn't, hasn't had that figured out yet. No. You know? And he and has it. I can't remember we'll see the Robert Pattinson from Tenet, you know, how he looked yeah. at that, being Bruce Wayne, but he doesn't, you know. Yeah. He's not yeah. He's not there yet. I mean, even his fighting isn't there. I mean, he gets beat up. He gets shot at. You know, he's not the Batman that knows how to dodge every area. So when they shoot, they're in the wrong area. Like he doesn't know how to use the shadows yet. 100%, you know, to his advantage. Like, I mean, he gets knocked around quite a bit. He gets worked. Like, like, he stalls in the Batmobile, like we said. I mean, there's so much. And that's why, to me, made this Batman so great. And when I came out of the theater, like I told you, I was like, this is the first time I can believe a rich dude could actually pull this off. Yeah. Because, one, we saw, like, a realistic car and engine that he was trying to build with the jet-propelled stuff. But, like, he's building it. Like, he's doing that. Like, you're seeing him really work through all this. And then you have Alfred helping him on the side. I mean, so there's these different things that are happening there that um, that really helps with the character. That we, honestly, if you're going to start a new Batman, this is the kind of stuff we needed to see. Yeah. Because if it was just more of the same, then this would have sucked. It just, oh, yeah. it would just put it out there. It would have been terrible. But this yeah. is what we needed. It would have been Matt Reeves trying to be Christopher Nolan and Robert Pattinson trying to be Christian Bale. Yeah. Those movies are fantastic. Let them stand on their own. Don't, mm-hmm. and, and I said this on the way back when we were coming back from the theater. I said, what I do know I preached about that movie is they told the Batman story different. We didn't get, you know, Thomas and Martha Wayne shot in the alley again. Mm-hmm. We, didn't this, we, didn't, we didn't do that this time. And they told this Batman story very differently and paid a lot of homage to the to source material. Um you know, I could have used more Alfred, and that's something to look forward to. Mm-hmm. We could all use more Andy Serkis in our lives. Let's be honest. Yes, yeah. Um, and yeah. hopefully, in future movies will get that relationship will also build because. But the stuff with Alfred was great. He was helping him try to solve the uh, the Riddler stuff, the mm-hmm. cipher, or what do you call it. He was so I thought that was great. And he's even, he even made a comment. It was like, "I'm what was he said? I, I went back to my uh, days in the uh, military or something." Yeah, something like that. Yep. Speaking to his life and. Yeah. Um, which is great because then you also have the line where he, where where um, where he where Alfred also said, "I can teach you how to fight, but I can't teach you how to be your true self," or something like that. Yeah. You know, so Alfred was the one who taught him mm-hmm. how to fight to help with this Batman. Like he is supporting in his crusade, but at the same time, he wants to be the voice of reason. And him trying to balance it, and then with and everything where he's lacking as Bruce Wayne, that's where Alfred's trying to pick it up. Like Alfred was the one running the company technically. Bruce yeah. Wayne was like just signing papers, right? He was making sure everything was taken care of because yes, he wants him to do this. He believes in what Bruce Wayne's trying to do with Batman, but he wants to make sure that he that Bruce Wayne doesn't die within this persona of Batman. 
He's like, yeah. Bruce Wayne is more important. So he's, so he's seeing already that whole dynamic starting to build. And I think we understand it a little better now because we're seeing him struggle. Where in past ones, yeah, we saw it, we'd understand it. But like now we're starting to understand on a deeper level, on a more psychological level, we're seeing like, okay, Batman is really jacked up mentally because of what happened to his parents. Mm -hmm. And the road he has taken has really messed him up. Where we hadn't really seen that portrayed before, which I think added so much. And then, you know, so, and then even seeing him, how he approaches the Riddler and how he approaches everything just with no care, head on. Now we understand why, because he legitimately just doesn't care. Um, but so, I mean, that's all the stuff that, again, we needed to see. We needed to see in this Batman. And you spoke to how the cops don't trust him. His only friend is Jim Gordon. Mm -hmm. And that is hit home a lot. And and even in the beginning scene where he walk, he beats up, he saves that guy off the train, mm -hmm. that gang. The guy he saves looks at him and says, don't hurt me. You know, yep. so everyone's just like, they don't know what to think. But then he goes into the crime scene, which was shot really well. The scenes where he was looking at the mayor's son. And oh, he, yeah. nothing had to be said. But we know what he's thinking as he knows what that kid's going through. Mm -hmm. And you and Robert Pattinson, what he did with his body language and his eyes in this movie was just terrific, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm getting ahead of myself, but um, I get excited talking about this stuff. But uh, it's, it's all. Uh, but so the contrast of the beginning where he saves the guy, beats up the guy, says, I'm vengeance. Mm -hmm. And the guy says, don't hurt me. To the end where he's helping load the lady on the chopper off mm -hmm. the the, the the arena or whatever and she right. doesn't want him to like she holds on to him you know mm -hmm. the contrast between those two scenes was just like that told the whole story of him okay i have to be more i have to be better you mm -hmm. know and um i thought that was just told yeah. really well yeah and like and if you look at it too like remember this thing starts off on a thursday on halloween like you hear it from the narration thursday. right this this whole story and then so when you look at it this might have taken place over what a week or two yeah, because it this, was it, the end was November sixth. Something. Okay, yeah. So you know, so about a week, and so and I thought that was that was also great because you see, because again, we got to walk with him through this whole thing. We got to walk step and step. It wasn't like with other movies in general where you may have this beginning and then you jump forward a month and then you jump another month and this whole story takes over a couple months or a month period. We're talking about a week. And yeah. so, like, everything that Batman is going through, like, and I think that's what helps so much is because it felt more like reading a comic or reading a book where you actually walked with this character to figure this stuff out. And and just seeing, like, even people around him, like, with, like when you're talking about he looked at the kid and he's like, you understood without saying a word. The only word that was spoken about that whole interaction was from Alfred. And when Alfred sees the playback and he goes, oh, yeah, that's the only word spoken about that whole thing. But we know exactly what's going on. To which, at the same time, it also frustrates me because in the same movie, we get that those subtle, brilliant things, but we also get this Joker scene. <laughs> yeah, and I want to talk about that a little bit more because I, I even on second view, I do not need that scene right there. It was way should have been a mid credit scene or something. Mid credit scene, you know, and and I have a feeling why it was in there. WB was probably like, look, we just made a ton of money with this character. Mm -hmm. He's, but you gotta have him in there somewhere, you know. Yeah. And I just, whatever. Maybe it's a nitpick, but I'm also like, because that's where I'm like, it just felt like a different movie right then. You know? It did. Yeah. Um, and Matt Reeves has come out and said, yes, that is the Joker. There's a deleted scene that'll be on the Blu-ray where Batman actually goes to visit him to get advice on how to catch the Joker or the, the Riddler. The yeah. Riddler. Um, which at the same time is like, okay, so he's Batman for two years. Joker's in Arkham. Future movies will maybe tell a story about they've had a run in. He's there somehow, some way, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I mean, I'm don't get me wrong. I'm glad the Joker's going to be in it, you know, because it's the Joker. But I also want to see more, like you said, yeah. more ones um, that we haven't seen on screen. You mm -hmm. know, I think it'd be cool to have the Joker just he's in Arkham and he's the back, he's in the background. <laughs> yeah, well, I'd be fine with too. Like the whole, I think we talked about this is is the whole like this. If Joker is there, going into a little bit of theory and stuff. If you're gonna have Joker there. Like treat him as the I think you said Hannibal Lecter, where yeah, like, like Batman goes in and like tries to talk to him for some advice and stuff to try just try to see if he can glean something from it. Because again, he's learning, right? He's not he's not gonna he's not gonna know within year three, year four, whatever the story picks up that I probably shouldn't be listening to this guy because he's just making me run around. 
you know, or may, maybe we see that in the second movie and they come to the third movie, Joker's been pulling the strings the whole time and now you got to deal with the Joker. You know, something like that would be fine. Um, but yeah, I, I, I am like, especially because of what they made in this movie, which is, which it being such a suspense psychological thriller more than anything. Oh, yeah. Um, with it being that, like, I would much rather see him deal with, uh, like a mad hatter. Um, uh, you have, you had told me before a scarecrow would be good because again, yeah. messes with the mind. Let's get a proper scarecrow. You know, nothing wrong with Nolan's. It just didn't feel like scarecrow, wasn't but enough. Yeah, it wasn't enough. So maybe give us like a scarecrow. That'd be cool. Yeah, um, the animated series as much as we've had, we we appreciate. Yeah, and I just watched the Long Halloween, the animated movie this morning mm -hmm. on HBO Max, and uh, um, there maybe there'll be a sponsor one day. Who knows? But, uh, <laughs> Who knows? I was like, yeah, that's I want more scarecrow. After yeah. Watching. So that yeah. So this uh, this is great villain. He has so many that we could use that really would fit well into this whole world. Yeah. I mean, especially and you already have penguins, so you can have him. Popping yeah. in and out, being a problem. There's so much that you can do because of how they set this whole thing up, and so that's what I'm hoping that we get that we get more of. Because we saw, yes, the Riddler was in there, and they brought all the corruption, you know, with the with the, with the Maronis and the Falcone and mm -hmm. and with cops and all. Like we saw all that, which is great. as Falcone. Yeah, that he did. I mean, and all this is great. Like all this is needed to show how bad Gotham is. You, you, I feel like you can't tell a Batman story without those two crime mob bosses yeah, and funny. those family you got to have them in there and then you have these villains that are screwing everything up i think all that was was great um you know and i did appreciate that they brought in with catwoman this is the one thing i did appreciate that like falcone's her dad and it's yeah. like okay i'm okay with that because it adds a different level and, and why catwoman has her vengeance and has her backstory so that was like again that was all good i just wish like you said some of the batman stuff we got out so there's all that stuff that's great setup but now it's like you have to continue to build on that because you have, to me, they have officially created the world of yeah. where, where the graphic novel, The Dark Knight, The Long Halloween, Hush, Quarter of Owls, all these great graphic novels that have come out. You have now created a world where all those comics can live and you can have a great adaptation and can exist. So yeah. now give us more of that because in the Nolan universe, I don't think those stories would play well. Right. No, with, yeah. yeah, with with Tim Burton, maybe, but it still had a little bit of campiness. You needed this kind of serious tone and darkness and just what it was to have those stories. And now you have created that and you've created a Batman who is going to struggle. And in these stories, Batman struggles, mm -hmm. you know, so like it, it's needed. And I think that that, that is just going to continue to add to the character to where if he grows, like even if they did something crazy, like, hey, it's doing great. Fourth movie fifth movie you can get to the point where he is prime batman and now he has to deal with a raz al ghul yeah. or now he has to deal with a death stroke which i would love to see him have to deal with that could be very cool but like now you can start adding these extra villains and so that's what makes me the most excited about this is like you have laid a great foundation now we can really grow with this character and this bat verse like to me the heck with dceu make this its own thing and just have this whole just bring us the animated series to life, right? Like, that's what I would love to see. Yeah, I mean, I, I think let the DCEU be his thing, and then we'll have this Batman verse, whatever you want to call it, his thing as well. And that's what comic books do. I know I'm not a comic book expert, but that's what they do. You have editions, mm -hmm. you have universes, you know. This doesn't need to be anywhere near the Snyder verse. Or, mm -mm, no. You know, let that be its own thing, and you know how much we appreciate that. Mm -hmm. and hope restored, maybe, maybe. Maybe. Uh, but let that be its own thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was I was hoping we talk about what what our predictions of what could be going forward with this Batman uh, franchise universe, and we kind of naturally segue into it. So good on yeah, us. There we go. Uh, yeah. Where this movie was clearly a um, it took uh, from the movie Seven. Mm -hmm. you know, I think it took that whole theme, uh, that whole feeling of that movie, were, without ripping it off. Yeah. Uh, maybe the sequel where we talked about the Joker, maybe it could be like a Silence of the Lambs type thing. You right. Know? Yeah. Where it's like, you know, where I think Joker was too much like Taxi Driver. This one was not, was like, okay, that's got kind of like the same spin as Seven, same feel, same yeah. vibe. There's a um, difference between ripping off and being inspired by. Yeah. And this was that, definitely inspired say, yeah. by. Yeah. 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 And this is, and again, yeah. this is what this, this character needed. I mean, it just, I know we've talked all over the place, but it's like, when you're talking about Batman and you're talking about the sea of superhero movies, this needed to exist. Yeah. 
Like it, it really needed to. It needed to do something different. I think this is why No Way Home did so great because even though it still had the same feel of other superhero movies, it finally did something different that audiences wanted. And I think true, you know, I think like deep Batman fans would really love this. I know there are some out there that didn't appreciate the take because they wanted to see the more the dichotomy of yeah. of Bruce Wayne and Batman, but it's like you're missing the point, like we already talked about. Um, so that's why we needed that. And I just think that 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 whole transition, especially, you know, I, like you said, at the end, uh, actually, uh, like he, like uh, before he like, fell into the water, poor Gary missed it the first time. You know, he threw himself out there because he saw the big transformer hanging yeah. and it was about to fall down there and it could have electrocuted and killed everyone in the water. So he takes it upon himself, falls in and then tries to save people and like, get him out. And even then. Even then, the new mayor and those people, he put his hand out, and they did not trust him. No. They looked at him like, ah, uh, it was the little boy who did it first. Yep. And the little and, and and if I remember correctly, it was the little boy who was the who was the the mayor who got murdered, son. Yeah, it's mayor. Who, yeah, yeah. So he's the one who reached his hand out first, bringing back which we love this when they tie things back to the beginning of the movie, bringing oh, yeah. that back. And he because they had that connection, he trusted Batman, and then everybody else trusted him starting to build that trust with gotham yeah Yeah. and that and also right before that scene the riddler's henchman guy the guy inspired from social media you know Mm -hmm. the riddler builds his army and it was like of course this is sad but this something like this would happen probably and Mm -hmm. what's the guy say i'm vengeance same thing he told the gang first scene we see you know and then batman's like oh man and that starts off the whole thing is i can't just be this you know, mm-hmm. um, and yeah, the first time we saw it, I had I did not catch the train. I don't know how I missed it because <laughs> I was like this, but I was your like, hat probably fell down a little bit. You couldn't see. Yeah, I know. I was like, he just jumped in the water. All right, <laughs> so got, yeah. he's trying out for the uh, Summer Olympics. He's going to be a diver, yeah. you know. But uh, and he did yeah, a terrible job really at that. Well. <laughs> yeah, all that was yeah. done really well. Full circle stuff. Great storytelling. Great directing. Um, I'm excited to see where they go next. I feel really good about my four out of five rating. Um, mm-hmm. you know, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to bump it up to a five, say it's a masterpiece, but I'm going to say this is a great movie. It's a great Batman movie. Um, the dark Knight still my, part of my, I think the dark Knight is the better movie and this might be the better Batman movie. If that makes any sense. Yep. You know? That makes a hundred percent sense. Um, yep. You know, but, but right now if I'm ranking Batman movies, I'm going dark Knight, the Batman mask, the phantasm, my top three. Yeah. Yeah, and that's good. Yeah, against rank after that, I'm still trying to figure it out. But my yeah. question for you is, did it go up for you? And yeah. So for me, so after seeing it, I mean, I, I did appreciate it so much more. I did see so much more in it where I'm just like, man, this is great. Um, you know, one thing that that kept me f- from putting it at a four was, you know, when there's a Catwoman thing, the length. And then the other one was like, I felt like he filmed it like in the sticky cam thing. And then after watching it, I realized it wasn't filmed that way. It was our seats. And so like it was our, yes, there was a lot of close ups, but it was our seats that made it feel that way to me. And so that's gone. And then, um, you know, I didn't feel the length. So it's just the whole Catwoman thing that is it's, it's just kind of, uh, and they could have messed with it. But yeah, but after seeing it again, and I, I'm just the one I, I'm just looking at it. I'm like. Dude, I love this movie so much that yeah, this thing I put it up there. I put it up there as a four. All right. Like I did, it moved up. I said like it's very good. It's probably a high three. Now nah, this thing's a four after seeing it again. Um, I like it a lot. And then let me tell you this, Gary. I'm gonna get these uh, get those things out of your face. But um, <laughs> but listen, like we said, better movie, better Batman movie. Honestly, after seeing it, okay, because I saw it three times, right? Yeah. So after seeing it three times. I honestly believe this is the best Batman movie we have gotten. Like just Batman movie. Yeah. Um, and like to like to me, like to me, as far as a Batman movie, this was even better than The Dark Knight to me. As far as a Batman movie. Now, if you're looking at what's a better movie, that's where I agree. Like a better just movie is The Dark Knight, yeah. because of what it did, and like because it was it was more than just Batman. There's a lot more going on in that. Like oh, we've yeah. talked about in past yeah. videos. Um, so that so the Dark Knight is is still like probably the best you know li- live action adaptation I guess or like in movie when it comes to movie quality, um, but this was like the best Batman I have seen on screen and maybe a lot of that's because I'm watching it I'm like gosh man I, this just reminds me of the animated series so much it really and is, yeah. and I'm just like I love you know I love that and that to me is like the best 
uh, adaptation we have gotten of any version of Batman oh, yeah. is the animated series. If, if so, you've watched your show from a while, you know we we hold the animated series to high regard. <laughs> yes, and Mask of the Phantasm to the high highest regard mm-hmm. you know, when it comes to animated and. And th- there was a lot of moments, especially in that second view, when I was like, "That's right, the animated series. That's right, out of the animated." Yep. Series, you know, and uh, and yeah, I mean, I, I I have to agree with you. This was I, as Batman. I don't know what else we could have wanted. Yeah. Because I mean, it's just it was character driven. It was it was phenomenal. And I think this movie is just going to age like fine wine. I don't drink. Mm-hmm. I hear old wine's good. So yeah, <laughs> it is, and it and it will, and there is nothing in this movie that's going to date it. That no. where you're gonna look at it and be like, oh, that that didn't age well. I don't think there'll be any of that. I I think, I think even though right now, I mean, I know a lot of people loved it. So some people are like, eh. I think this is gonna be one you watch that yeah. ten years from now. I think they're gonna be studying this movie and like breaking everything down on what they did and saying like, this is how you make an yeah. instant classic. Yeah. And I, I think this is gonna be up there with that, just like the Dark Knight. Again, if I will give the edge to Dark Knight for being a better overall movie. But this again, this is the best Batman movie I have ever seen. Yeah, yep. I, I, I have to absolutely one hundred percent agree. I can't wait to see it more. Hopefully, uh, get to Dolby Theater soon. Check it out. Um, but I know one mm-hmm. thing: it's going to be on the shelf. Oh yeah, Steelbook. Yeah, I might get a few different versions of it. I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Doing. But this time, I'll let you know, man. I'll be like, hey, it's available on pre-order through yeah. Best Buy Steelbook, so you can get it ahead of time. I know. I missed the No Way Home Steelbook. It's still not – I missed yeah. that. Yeah, I pre-ordered mine, obviously, being Spider-Man guy. But you, being yeah, the huge missing. Batman guy, will not let you miss it. I'm not missing this one. And, and they've already come out with proposed artwork, and it looks pretty great. So. Yeah. Well, I don't know what else we – I mean, we could probably go on for another 45 minutes, but, you know, yeah. Batman spoiler yeah. review is in the books. Mm-hmm. Uh, Thanks for watching. Share, like, subscribe, yep. comment. What did you think? Is this the best version of Batman we've gotten? What will we see next? Or did you not like it? If you know, if you didn't, that's fine. Yeah. We would like to hear why, though. Let us know. We want to hear why. Yeah, we want. Yeah. We want to debate here. And, yes, uh, and we're fresh. fine with that. Listen, we're just we're just the ones. Don't just be those people that come up like I don't like it. It was stupid. No. Okay. Why? Why? Let us know. We would. We, we love to hear. We would yeah. love to hear from you. Well, thanks for watching, and uh, I don't know. I I was trying to think of a really cool. Yeah, he was going to say something cool. He failed. Thanks for watching, everyone. Subscribe if you haven't. See you guys soon. Really cool ending line goes here.